Hello everyone, hope you guys are having an awesome day. It is April 5th, and today I am back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, this week's severe weather pattern. Uh, this week looks, once again, active for severe weather. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So today we have a slight risk. This is our day one convective outlook. We have a slight risk going, it takes up a decent amount of uh, southern and central Minnesota right there. And we have a marginal risk going all the way up from the Canadian border, which we, we see that... Uh, we we kind of rarely we rarely see that this time of year. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's only early April. We have that marginal risk going up to the Canadian border and stretching down into central Nebraska. Um, now we're not going to really talk too much about today. Don't really have a tornado threat. Fifteen percent wind and a fifteen percent hail. Uh, that's what I expected. They would put the slight risk in for. And tomorrow we have. Uh, this, is this is tomorrow, which is Tuesday, the uh, 6th. We have our slight risk in Can central Kansas right there. Um, and we have a marginal risk surrounding that. Now, we're going to go pretty... We're going to talk about tomorrow a lot. Because uh, tomorrow could be a big day. There's just a, there's, there's a s several limiting factors of one major limiting factor. And we're going to talk about that. Um, this is, that's for tomorrow, which is Tuesday, of course. And then Wednesday... We can see our day three convective outlook Wednesday and Thursday seem to be like very interesting days also. Wednesday seems to maybe be the biggest day. We have a slight risk going from Arkansas and down into northern Louisiana, western and central Mississippi, and northeastern Texas. And we have our marginal risk going up from central Iowa down to southern Louisiana. So pretty big area for Wednesday. And then Thursday, which would be, we don't have a day four outlook out for Thursday, but I think Thursday is going to be another severe weather day also. So let's get started here. So uh, this is tonight. We're not going to talk about tonight, but let's go out to tomorrow at around 15Z and see what kind of pattern we have. So 15Z tomorrow, let's go to composite reflectivity. Or actually, we're going to use uh, reflectivity UH uh, greater than 75. Just kind of tell you, show you where you have where you have supercells. Um, 15Z tomorrow, we don't have much going on. We have our surface low right around right here, maybe some morning convection or morning showers moving through areas like Omaha and maybe uh, Topeka, Kansas. Uh, as we go into the afternoon, though, when we get that afternoon heating, we will get some supercells potentially to erupt, to erupt in Kansas. Kansas looks to be the bullseye for this. But we could just see some severe weather in other places. Uh, indicates the name three maybe indicates some some thunderstorms in Iowa, kind of early afternoon. Let's try and zoom in on that area and see what we have. Yes, this is the thunderstorms in Iowa I was talking about here at around 17Z. Take some soundings with those. I'm not expecting these to be impressive. Well, let's take a sounding. Yeah, those aren't going to really pose a whole lot of a severe threat. Nothing significant with those. Of course, maybe a damaging wind risk, maybe a small hail threat also. I don't think there's going to be a significant, like a lot, very large hail threat with these storms in Iowa uh, in the early afternoon, but this they would have a they would have a severe threat with them. Uh, not, not nothing too significant though. Now let's go back out to the national, or t t so we can, or let's go back out to uh, the continental U.S. so we can see everything, and we're gonna go ahead go to another go to 18 Z. This is around. This is around uh, 2 p.m. Storms in Iowa kind of dying out. Still no new convection indicated by the NAM 3. 19Z, we're starting to get more instability. We can just take a little test sounding in southern Kansas. I'm not expecting this to be good or anything. Yeah, yeah this is terrible. But other than the capping, this is not a terrible sounding. Just, uh, that, that's not really going to, the chances of that breaking is are going to be pretty low. Uh, that's going to be, capping is going to be a very significant issue for tomorrow. Uh, we go to, this is 19Z, we go to 20Z. And we can see still no storms going off. Maybe something, name indicates something in Colorado. Let's take a sounding of that. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. We have instability. This is on the back side of the low, I I'm pretty sure. Uh, this This would actually be a... Those storms in Colorado could have a hail threat for sure. Those look, uh, it's that looks like a good sounding for hail. So if we see storms go off maybe in Colorado tomorrow, they're going to be low moisture, kind of maybe LP storms. 
Uh, they're not going to have a lot of moisture to work with. Those could pose a large hail threat, though. Now, we got a 21Z. We can st still see no storms going off. We can take a look and see if our cap is breaking anywhere. And, yeah, no, this is not going to do much. Uh, it's that capping, of course. We got a 22Z. We finally have some storms going off in Kansas. Uh, we finally have initiation. Take some songs in front of these. These are capped still. This is a little bit less capping than we saw before, but still, that's a problem. Now, this capping, this capping inversion could be breakable. It's going to be hard, though. We have plenty. We have a decent amount of instability, uh, steep lapse rates. It's really just the inversion, and we don't have really good shear. That's not really going to be a perfect sounding. I was kind of watching maybe the southern part of their slight risk, uh, where the shear is a little bit better. Now, calving still exists, though, with all of these soundings. Let's go ahead and look at mixed layer CIN at 22Z. We can see so much. If we can get anything, it's going to be on the back side, kind of right here where we have a little bit less capping. Maybe there we can see something. Let's go back to composite reflectivity or, uh, no, not composite reflectivity, reflectivity, uh, th this reflectivity option and take a sounding right there, maybe like on the right side. Maybe we have a little bit less capping. Yeah, the problem with this is this looks to be uh, behind the dry line. But those surface lapse rates are extreme. But the, we don't have this. This is the, there's not enough moisture uh, for to work with in that sounding really. Um, that still maybe bring a severe, a severe risk. Just not too good. Twenty uh, three Z. We still have those storms. Take another sounding right there in front of those. This is a little better. The capping is a little less. You have decent shear. Uh, this is contaminated, so let me get a new one. Let's actually zoom in on Kansas here. Yeah, so take a sounding further to the east right here. I'm sure this is going to be capped. Yeah, this is capped. That's very capped. Let's go to 0, zero ZC, what we have. Still not a whole lot of action, though, um, according to the NAM3. Uh, capping is just such an issue tomorrow now. As zero zero Z, the NAM3 still indicates maybe some thunderstorms in Colorado. Let's take a sounding in front of this. This is barely contaminated. We don't have much. Yeah, that's not really going to do a whole lot. But that Hodo, though, that is that is insane. Or not, not, not insane for like, uh, that's not insane for tornadic activity. I've never seen a Hodo like that, though. That's just kind of cool to see. Now I go to O1Z. This is around 8 p.m. We still have some action going on in Kansas. Let's take a sounding to see if the cap broke at all. Cap is cap kind of weakens a little bit, but not a whole lot. Now, tomorrow, if we can get uh, spots in the cap to break, then we could see a decent tornado threat. Uh, maybe like a 2% or a 5%. It just depends if the cap will actually break. Because uh, if that cap doesn't break, that's going to really limit storms. So, um, yeah, now let's go ahead and talk about Wednesday. So let's go back to the uh, continental U.S. and go on to Wednesday. So Wednesday is the day that has been looking really the best. Let's go over to 500 millibar winds. Six, six, we can see this is Wednesday morning. We have a really nice looking, uh, kind of not really a negative. It's kind of a negative tilt, a little short wave moving to the east and Go later into the afternoon. It's got a 15Z. Kind of late morning. Very nice uh, looking storm system here. This looks great uh, for severe weather. Kind of a classic. Uh, kind of a classic arc with hex. Uh, maybe uh, south severe weather event. And continue going into the afternoon. This continues to look gr really good still. Uh, and we go back to surface and precipitation. Actually, yeah, let's go to surface and precipitation. We're going to do this so we can see uh, isobars and things like that. So we have our cold front right here, warm front like this, and maybe I have a secondary maybe area for some thunder, for some storm activity, maybe right around the upper level low, uh, on the back side of the surface low, we could see something. That's kind of an area to watch. Um, and... 
this this model, this is the 18-0 under the NAM 3, maybe indicates some storms are going on in Iowa in the early afternoon hours. It gets sounding there. Yeah, these would have a, this would be a severe threat for sure. The hail and damaging winds are the main threat. You're not, it's going to, that, 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 the chance of getting a tornado out of that is pretty low. That's not a good sounding for tornadoes. Uh, just maybe a hail and wind threat with that uh, area right there, so. We go later into the afternoon. This is 19Z. The NAM3 doesn't indicate a whole lot going on in our slight risk area. We go down. Let's go to the Ohio Valley. Not a whole lot going on. Just kind of a cold front right here. Storms in front of that. Mainly, in the NAM3 the NAM kind of indicates them being weak. We take some soundings in front of these, though. This is still, once again, kind of like the Iowa sounding. This is not very good for tornadoes, but this would likely have um, a large hail threat with damaging winds for sure. Maybe could get a tornado out of that. So that's still kind of not the best setup. Uh, we take a sounding in northeastern Arkansas where we have maybe a better environment. This looks a little bit better. Not Still, once again, not really good. We don't have a whole lot of instability. It is capped. This overall is not a great sounding. Um... Yeah, let's go to dew points. So you have a cold front right here. Moist dew is in front of it. And let's scroll down. Let's go to, uh, we're going to get mixed layer cape here. We have a decent amount of instability. Let's take a sounding right where we have this uh, pocket of instability right there. This is, kind of, this is kind of what I'm talking about, a little bit better. Uh, this is why I'm thinking that Wednesday could be, be could be a decent uh, day for some tornadoes. Uh, we have, this is overall not bad sounding, we have plenty of instability. Uh, this would support large hail also, this sounding, and Hodo doesn't look bad. It's a little messy, but Hodo doesn't look terrible. Uh, mainly, five. that's probably going to be a 5% tornado risk. Uh, that doesn't look insanely good at all. And take a sounding on the cold front in Texas. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting. This would uh, maybe favor more of a damaging wind threat. Um... Still a large hail and maybe an isolated tornado out of that also. So let's go back to comp we're gonna go yeah we're gonna go back to uh, reflectivity here and we're gonna go later into the afternoon. Let's go to twenty z. Storms maybe going off in Mississippi. Let's take a sounding there. Okay yeah this is looking good. This is looking a little bit better. I'm liking the looks of that hodo. Uh, just a little more. The hodo is looking decent and. Decent amount of instability, decent looking shear, and lapse rates aren't as good. But that's still not a terrible sounding. I would favor 5% risk for tornadoes, in my opinion. Uh, take a sounding in extreme southeastern Missouri. Mainly a severe threat with this, or overall. I, the sounding does not look as good as the ones further to the south. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to the next forecast, hour 21Z. Maybe some storms progressing into northwestern Mississippi. Not not a whole lot different from what we just saw before. Maybe some storms in Missouri at around 22Z that are looking kind of interesting. Take a sounding with those. Okay, yeah, those would likely pose maybe a little bit of a tornado threat. Still, not an insanely good sounding, but definitely you could get a tornado out of this sounding for sure. Uh, but still pretty pretty marginal shear. Uh, take a sounding up in Iowa. Not bad, not bad. This is good for severe weather once again. Uh, decent for damaging winds. I'd say that would be the main threat with this. Maybe some smaller hail and could get a tornado out of that. That I don't, I don't, I'm not liking the looks of that though. Uh, 23Z, storms progress, progressing and further into Illinois and storms in northwestern Missouri, or not Missouri, Mississippi, my, or sorry. This, the, this sounding is probably... This, this sounding looks decent. Uh, we have decent shear and a marginal amount of instability, just around a thousand cape. That's plenty though. Not a lot of capping. And this hodo does. This hodo looks good. So I think we could have even a few supercells potentially moving in the areas of Mississippi and Arkansas. And we can zoom further. Let's go further to the south into Texas, because we're still gonna have a severe weather threat down there. Take a sounding here in eastern Texas. Still a tornado threat with this for sure. So, right now I'm thinking the best tornado threat looks to be this area. 
And that's just with the NAM3, though. And tomorrow, we're going to look at the HRRR also. Uh, we're not going to do that tonight, though. Now, let's go to the next forecast hour, 0, 0, Z. You can see that line progresses further to the east, and the storms go a little bit more linear in the south. But now, let's switch topics a little bit here. No, not really. Let's go ahead and look at Thursday, because Thursday is going to continue the severe weather threat. Uh, it's going to continue moving further to the east. So let's go out to Thursday morning, or Thursday at 15 Z, so kind of like the late morning hours. We have our low spinning uh, in Minnesota, kind of weak. It's, it's weakening. Uh, we have storms maybe in Wisconsin, Michigan, that area. And we could even have some storms in the south, like Alabama, Mississippi, Florida Panhandle, Georgia, maybe eastern Tennessee. And take some soundings of these. We can take one uh, kind of around Atlanta. Overall, not not that good. We have not a lot of instability. Sheer, it's marginal, really marginal. And Tahoe looks really not good. Take a sounding in Michigan, just in front of those. And yeah, this overall doesn't look too good. You're not going to get a tornado out of this. Um, this mainly a damaging wind threat, if anything, or a gusty wind threat. Um, so yeah, now let's go ahead and go to later in the afternoon. Thursday at 18 Z, this is around 3 to 4 p.m. And we have our low in eastern Minnesota. Storms continuing to move through Georgia and that area. Let's take a sounding with those. 50, 58 degree dew point. Uh... Once again, not that good. I think Thursday is not looking too good in that area. Let's go further to the south. Let's go to southwest Georgia. This one might be contaminated. It's not contaminated a lot. This would not... I'm not thinking tornadoes with this. I'm thinking more of a uh, damaging wind threat. Uh, maybe a linear storm. Mode. Take a sound in eastern Kentucky. Um, yeah, once again, damaging wind threat. Um, now I'm not... Okay, so... Well, that's, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, but... I'm thinking Thursday looks to be the best, maybe, in this area here. Uh, but yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, but yes, goodbye.